Star Trek Online video. Uh, I've got a lovely, lovely review video today for, uh, for the Miracle Worker Cruiser. And it's a pretty decent little ship that I've found. Obviously it is new out in the, in the sea store, so obviously you do have to spend real money to get it. But for the money that you spend for it, especially if it's on sale at the moment, it's a pretty decent little buy, especially if you just want a nice, stocky, quite maneuverable little cruiser to, to fly around him. So what I've got with this uh, with this with this ship at the moment is it's gonna look a little bit like a rainbow boat, but they are as you can see all disruptor beams. Which obviously is quite important so you can get that extra energy boost. <coughs> So it's just a basic loadout that I've done, it's nothing special um, and I haven't really put any effort into it. So what I would just want to say is it's, it's a very decent little maneuverable ship, it flies pretty nicely, you know it's not hard, it's not, you know it's turn rate's not horrendous like others can be, but obviously it's not going to be as quick as an escort. So. What we've got here is I've got the tactical version, which is the Tucker class. And what we're going to do is, before I do that, actually, let's go into space dock. Let's see about the customizations options. And because I'm not aiming for the door, let's just do that. So when we get in there, hopefully, it won't be too long. Just going to show you on the different variations of the Miracle Worker class. So, like I said, I have the tactical version, which is called the Tucker class. Quite a nice little, uh, quite a nice little uh, name, the little Tucker class. Uh, whether that has anything to do from uh, from trip from Star Trek Enterprise, I don't know. So let's go and have a look. So here over to this lovely lass. Um, let me just quickly, let's do that, yeah, that's cool, that's fantastic. Okay, just in case I don't want people to really know who, uh, no, no, but anyway, back to this. So yeah, if you scroll over to tier 6, you can just go to all tiers or you can just go to cruisers. It's really easy if you just go to cruiser. So, here's the first one, this is the science. This is the Staystrom variant. As you can see, they are all very similar, but there are some little differences on them. Obviously, with this one, with the, if you have a look at the engines on here, I like the Bizarre, the, the, the bizarre Collectors. I do like them, I think they look quite nice. They kind of look like, you know, modern day engines. Or sort of modern day, you know, jet engines. Um, but it's quite a sleek little design. Um, I don't think the saucer section is big enough, and this is something that I'm going to come across with the. Uh, I'll also go through the Tucker variant as well uh, about the issues I have with, the, with with that as well. So if you have a look at the Tucker variant, which you basically seen that I've already just been flying around. Okay, so have a look at the saucer section. It's kind of an arrowhead, and for some reason I'm not actually too keen on that. Um, so what I kind of want for Tucker variant is a wider saucer section. As you can see with the Scott variant, I do actually like this flat sort of saucer section. I think it looks quite nice, but that's just my my opinion on it. Um, but let's quickly just nip back to the Daystrom variant, and we'll go through the officer stations. So obviously, we've got one universal. Sub commander, you've got one sub commander science, you've got a commander engineering, uh, you've then got the ensign slot and uh, engineering slot, and you've got a uh, lieutenant tactical slot. Um, which you will notice the little symbols that's the, the new miracle worker uh, specialization that, that has come out with it. Um, what I would actually recommend doing is actually getting one of these officers because they're actually pretty decent. The abilities, uh, a lot of them are offensive and defensive. So it seems to it seems to balance it out quite nicely and I actually use some of these uh, myself since since seeing them. Um, 
but as you can see, the console slots underneath for your console or the con your add-on consoles. You have the four engineering. You've got three tactical, four science, and one universal. So you have the the, the art weapons uh, four and four weapons four. Base turn rate of six. Device slots four. Base heart of sixty thousand and one point one five shield modifier. Now I think it might be very similar on the rest of them. Yeah, exactly the same stats other than the console slots, so obviously this is the Scott variant, this is the operation, so that's the standard sort of engineering version of it. Um, it's all a cruiser, so it's all technically an engineering ship, but obviously you have got that extra one, that extra one engineering console instead of having it on the sides. Plus if you also have a look, you've only got one ensign science slot, but you have got a sub commander engineering slot and a full commander engineering slot. Um, but the variant I like on this, I like love the engines on this. Mainly because I love the way that they look. Um, I like that little grilled section that's down there. And that actually really appeals to me and I would quite happily have that, but it means I then have to buy more. And uh, at the moment, I don't think I'm going to buy more. Um, mainly because I don't actually want to and I cannot afford it, so that's always a bummer. Um, so, if I have a look, obviously the... Uh, it's very similar in the shape of it as well. You do have that slight dip and then it comes back out again. But they, the, the struts or the pylons are actually on a higher, wider spread than what the other two are. As you can see with the other two, they actually do come down into that sort of, I want to say, like an eye shape. Um, so, I let's go over to the, Scott, uh, the Tucker variant, which is the variant I have. And I've gone past it somewhere there. In, hang on. You have to excuse me, my eyesight is rubbish. There it is. So, you've got the Tucker variant. Um, so obviously you're missing one engineering slot, and you've then gained one extra tactical console slot, which is pretty decent to be honest. Uh, especially as I'm a tactical officer, so I do need now that extra slot does help quite a bit for me. Um, you've got a sub commander universal slot, a sub commander tactical slot, then you have an ensign engineering, you then have a commander engineering, and then a, a lieutenant science slot, which works out great for me because. I don't, I, I don't plan to put too many science on uh, science uh, abilities on this ship either, so that's absolutely fine for me. So that's going for it all. What I would probably have mine as is, like I said, with those engines from from the uh, Scott variant, just because I absolutely uh, adore those engines in comparison to these ones anyway. So. Just hope it was them. There's that one. And that one. I just think it looks a lot nicer. Um, I would also change the source section to also the Scott variant, just because I prefer it myself. But it's down to down to what whatever you like. Obviously, that's the that's it for the custom features. So that's everything you can do. So obviously you just get the basics and whatever wife or whatever ones you want to add on to it. So material wise, you again you have all the same, no special variant. It comes standard with the type 7 material. Um, I can't actually remember what windows it comes with. Unfortunately, I think it was five that it came with. But I decided to put type 1 on. Um, so let's leave that because I don't plan on saving it because I'm not buying any. And next thing we will do, we'll return back to ship and I'll see if I can get us out to. Uh, it's only going to be a level 30 D space encounter, but we'll see if I can get us down to that. Hopefully, providing any, providing any spawn anyway. Um, as you may notice, if you play the game, it's a little bit sometimes stingy or they all appear at once and then as soon as you get there you disappear. So let's take
take us into that. Let's warp sector. So I have also made an anti-proton build, which works very nicely with uh, with with this ship, and it, it does pack a huge punch. Um, and obviously, what I would say is get as many get as many uh, uh, many of your consoles abilities uh, or your you know your weapons, shields, your walkway, everything like that. Just boost it all the way up to maximum. Obviously, that's going to be your best chance for you know the, a maximum damage output. But like I said, this is just a basic build, and I've not done anything special with it. Um, you know, I've I've put other you know other little consoles on there, which uh, have been known to be pretty decent, pretty decent little consoles. Let's try to speed up a little bit. I'm probably going to get over there. It doesn't it doesn't disappear. So many people coming on. Okay, so you do get a little, you do get ability with this ship, the Crimson Force Field. It does help with uh, with with minor, you know, obviously you can see there, minus 50% all outgoing damage, minus 50% healing received. So obviously that is against target, and it's not against yourself. Uh, it's pretty decent. I mean, I'm not, not to be honest, I don't use it as often as I. Possibly should. Why am I so far off course? I don't know why. It's sampling quite a bit at the moment. Every time you plot in a course, it veers you off somewhere else. So let's go in there. Let's show you how we're, you know. Again, it's only, it's only against level 30, so it's not going to. They're not going to be sapping your hull away like crazy. Um, but to be honest, I just can't bother to sit in a queue. Yeah, just sit in the queue, do nothing. Come on, here we go. Ah, I actually made the cat jump, I did. So, obviously, just little birds of prey, not going to do too much damage. Should be a bit of a shame if nobody else turns up because then you can't really see anything. Ah, yes! Somebody turned up, that's nice. So I've got um, beam fire at wheels on there. I've got your overloads. Um, I do have torpedo slots there, but again, it's something I actually always forget to use. Oh, you get still, you get shot into the sun. Yeah, I know that's happened to me before. I've actually come out of missions, and I've actually been stuck inside the boundary of the star, and I've had to transport that up. Just to uh, just to escape it. So torpedo wise, I do put these the to these torpedoes on that I've got on there at the moment, just because they do have the added extra effect with the uh, there's that bit there. Uh, yeah, because you have the extra red bonus with the Terran Task Force. Yeah, again, I know they're only level 30s, but, you know, you don't take no shit. don't take no shit at all. I actually quite like it, because I actually feel, with her and again, I know they're level 30, but I have taken it to higher PVs, but I always feel so sort of, so sweet and powerful there. It's just big, bulky, tanky, and it's such a shame because I absolutely love this this class of ship. I love cruisers, but I just cannot have them, um, especially if I'm doing something like PvP. Because to have 
I need to have that tactical edge on. Plus, whenever that bloody ability activates, nobody ever decides to fire on me, and then I end up wasting it. And that was feedback pulse for people who don't know. So yeah, I mean, it was it's this pretty nice little flying ship. Um, it can absolutely pa absolutely pack a punch, and they still haven't fixed that glitch. That's the first time it's happened in absolute ages. That glitch. You know, I would warp out though. I don't want to impulse it. Um, when I was when I started my Romulan character, I actually went with the Federation. With my Klingon character, I'm going to be going with uh, going to be going with the Romulan, with the Tau Shia. Just because you know, difference. You know, if there's if there's any difference in the stories at all. Um, but to be honest, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a Fed character at the moment. Um, and a kind of, obviously, I don't get a choice. There's some factions I can go with. I've actually, I mean, there's one thing that's actually pretty cool to this design. I actually built this design because um, I own a 3D printer, so I actually printed this design off the Miracle Worker ship out. Um, I printed it out last night, and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Um, it's only a small, it was only a small prototype, but it was pretty decent. Um, it might be actually be something that I might start adding to the YouTube channel as well, is time lapses of 3D prints and that. Because I've built quite a lot of stuff on my on my printers, such as uh, you know Destiny Ghosts, other Star Trek ships, um, including uh, the new Kelvin Constitution. Uh, I've built an Enterprise J. I've built, I've built some ships I've just made up completely by myself, um, and the USS Kelvin as well. And it's you know they turn out pretty nice. Yay, people! I have to. That's something I've always been jealous about is how the Romulan ships explode with their singularity. Love that um, that black hole that this was. You know, it's just occurred to me. I don't think I actually answered your question. Uh, which of which faction do you think I, do I think is best? I, I prefer to go with the. I would definitely prefer to go with the. Uh, but the Republic. I, I I don't know where it's. I don't really like Sela, and I don't like, don't like how it portrays people like that. You know, that, to me, they're the bad guys. Come on, fire at me! Do it. I'd also recommend this that um, if you want that tight turn, obviously if you cut your impulse down half whilst you're turning, and then just come back and pop it back up again. Uh, that was pointless. Um, so far, I mean, I haven't really spent much time on my Romulan character. Like, as I spend most of my time on this one, I know I've maxed out basically everything on here. But I haven't really noticed that much of a difference, obviously. Um, so far, I've only just gone through the first few bits of the campaign, so I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, other than, obviously, you'll be able to go into to whatever faction you choose, you'll be able to go into their star base. Uh, or or their, their, so speak, their social error. Some people don't like being the feds, but I, you know, I quite like the generation. Spread peace, man, not war. Spread peace. And 
they all die? I managed to dispatch them quicker than all of them over there if I, you know, there's so many of them over there, but by myself managed to dispatch all of them. I like the classic designs like Sulphur and like the Vengeance and this, but there's something about this actually just triggered for me and I was like, I really, really got to play this. So, that's what I did. And you know what, I, I absolutely do not regret spending the money on this gem. had this really strange idea uh, the, the other day where I actually thought and people will probably already do this but I actually thought you know what I'm gonna do for my uh, registry number I'm actually gonna start doing it on the day that I get it because it never even occurred to me because I hate the fact that when you when you spawn it it has the standard nine whatever whatever, whatever. I, I, I like it to make it personal and with all my ships, uh, especially my main my main ship, it, it's a certain it's a special number, so it's it's what I have. And for anybody who guesses, no, it's not my birthday. Um, and it's actually, you know, I said it's a special number to me, so I normally use that as my main as my main ship, just because uh, you know it, it makes it looks nice. To be honest, it's not a, a bad looking registry number. So. Soul. Loading tap. Loading, loading. I wish we could go to other parts of the soul system because obviously we're not just going to be going to Earth. I mean, you, you look at it and you're going to be, you know, you've got Jupiter Station, you've, you've got all sorts, but all we ever go to is the main, the complete main section of the Federation fleet, which is uh, obviously a space dock. I really wish I could just go. To, you know, like stop off at Jupiter or have a look at the Mars colonies or you know, you know, just fly by on the moon, just like, whoosh, just like stand up, you know, peer out my window, like, hey, what's that, bitches? You know, pretty decent, pretty decent. But yeah, yeah. I, no, I, like again, I'll, I'll give you another look on on the loadout. Excuse the name, it's it's German, um, and it means victory caster. And yeah, this console here, this is what you get, it's the Crimson Force Field, which is the big red sort of like warby shit I was spewing out now and then. Um, but this is, I'll go through with what I've got on the build for you. So I've got some fleet consoles here, giving uh, the whole restoration. When it comes to, to heal, whole healing, you want to really go for uh, anything with restoration over regeneration, because that's the whole, that's the whole, whole pit. It's a bit of a tongue twister that. That's the overall amount of healing that it's doing. Of the regeneration differs on the rate because it it regenerates more out of combat than it does in combat. But this is as a whole. Uh, uh, yeah, I got this one. I believe that's from a mission. Yeah, it's from a rep. This one's from a rep. This is Romulan rep. 
Um, I pop this on just because the auxiliary power does give that critical chance. That's from the Lobby Store. These are all your fleet consoles for your disruptor. Obviously, a lot better than your standard, your standard um, beam tactical consoles because you have got that extra critical chance on there. They're all the same, so I don't know why I'm sifting through back and forth. Uh, the Bounty Hunter, that's also from the Lobby Store. It has a nice, uh, nice ability of the energy damage resistance, another 37.5% energy damage resistance, which, which it pumps up the uh, stats a little bit. Uh, another fleet, this is the fleet warp core. Uh, oh, I only have an advanced on there. Strange, that's... Yeah, that's the province. There we go. That's better. Get my elite on there. Uh, yeah, it gives all these abilities, and because I'm, I'm more versed up as a tactical officer, I do have the more tactical side. Yes, this is a engineering officer ship, really, but... I'll, I won't tell if you don't. Um, Borg, the, the Borg sub warp, the sub trans warp engines from the reputations. Uh, you've got the advanced position deflector. Obviously, if you want to read any of them, just uh, once the streams end, obviously you can always go back and just check them again. Or you can even just visit us on YouTube under the British Gaming Guys. Um, watch it there, and you can just pause and watch. Um, there you say. So, this is a, a fleet deflector. Then got a uh, fleet, the fleet uh, shield array. Your deflectors in your shield array definitely, I mean, over reputation, definitely go for your fleets here. Um, I, I, looking at the abilities, I mean, even the, the, the Borg, oh, I haven't got it on there, so it's on something else. Even the Borg shield, in comparison to your fleet ones, actually is pretty bad. Um, now, again, this isn't a rainbow boat, they are all disruptor. Um, but you know, why stick with the norm? As long as you've got one energy type, that don't matter. You stick with that one energy type, and you'll be golden for days. Um, plus, all the ones that I wanted, they don't do in the same color. If you could adjust the color of, of your beams, that would be absolutely fantastic. That would be cherry on the top. I mean, come on, you know, having, you know, like tetrion but coming out pink. But not just having a single Tetrion, having different Tetrion weapons, or in this case, different disruptor weapons, and then chucking out loads of uh, loads of different, you know, you could have loads of different colours. But then I suppose it makes it harder when you're really trying to figure out if someone's actually got a good build or not. Um, pretty easy to tell normally. But obviously, the more weapons, the harder it is getting. Um, I'm actually looking at some visuals for this for this ship, and now let me know what you think about the. Lucari, if you send them the Lucari shields, because it turns everything blue. Your bizarre collectors, you know, all give this nice blue gleam across it. And I think it looks really nice. I don't think we've got anybody in the in the instance that's got them. Well, this instance is pretty bare. Oh, it's bare. Oh. God, there's no one here. Anyway, yeah, it's a nice blue. blue but yeah, so I mean that's my review on it. Is that I, th I th it's totally worth the money you're gonna spend for it. Um, it's a fantastic little tier six ship. It has got a nice mastery as well. I'll show you the mastery quickly actually because I don't I don't think I did that. I don't think I did it. There's the mastery. So you've got the absorbed hull planing, which gives the the physical and kinetic damage resistance. You've got the rapid repairs, which obviously. As it says on the tin, regenerates 1,328.9, which is 1.2% of my current hull, every 3 seconds in space. Twice this amount is regenerated out of combat. So that's, you know, that's pretty decent. You normally find that ability on the Advanced Heavy Cruiser, which is the Excelsior class and the Excelsior Refit class. Um, enhanced hull plating. Uh, you can see I haven't played this long because I've only on all these two. Uh, the plus 25 energy damage resistance and radiation uh, damage resistance, which is great against the Borg, that's always fun. Especially when they have their little uh, luscious torpedoes, and then they come and they, they splatter it all over you, and then you're on fire. And yeah, that's, that's horrible. Uh, the armored hull, plus 10% hit points. But this is obviously the tier 5 main mastery bit, which is once per person while beam uh, fire at will is active, receiving any damage, any damage grants plus 0 
second duration to fire at will, with a total of 15 seconds total during dur duration maximum. So you can actually keep it longer for 15 seconds longer, which is pretty decent, especially, and someone actually pointed this out to me, is having a few a few stats on it, a, a few abilities on there, of having the feedback pulse, polarize hole, attract fire, um, and then obviously the fire, fire at will. Um, and that's going to cause some chaos. But yeah, so really working towards that, and that's a pretty decent little little one as, as well. But uh, yeah, so my overall is if you are going to open your wallet to these people for anything, for a single tier 6 ship, you've got to open it for this one. There are loads of tier 6 ships that you can buy with your real money. And believe me, I've, I've tried, and I have. See, look. Look at the amount of ships I have. Oh, we're still going. There we go. The amount of ships were, uh, uh, you know, I have, and I definitely would say that I think this is one of the most fun ships I have actually had the pleasure of flying. Um, and like I said, I don't really like the look of ships like this, but I do love this one, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so 10 out of 10, definitely recommend to a friend. But um, but yeah. But uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed enjoyed the stream, you can always catch us. I'm on most days, uh, most days now. Um, you can catch us all there, and you can follow us on YouTube on the British Gamer Guys. I do post a, I do post uh, you know alerts when when I'm going live on here because I have had that setting set up. I also post on Twitter, which um, my Twitter Twitter at is at Shadow Marines. So you can always find me on there and follow me on there as well. There is a page for the British Gamer Guns, but don't follow that because I haven't, f I can't remember the password at the moment, so I won't respond to anything that you may, uh, you may say. Um, so what I say is, again, thanks for everyone for watching, and especially thanks to the chat that I've had there. I don't often, to be honest, I don't actually often get chats at all, to be honest, which is sad, really, because you know I like chatting. Um, I do normally have other guys here, and we do normally all stream together. But um, obviously, I'm just doing this by myself today, um, as I'm the main, the main streamer from this from this account. So, um, so yeah. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, again, you can find us on YouTube under the British Gamer Guys, and I will see you guys later. Bye.